Hello friends. Now we are going to study the blood supply of abdominal part. The blood supply of abdominal part that is supplied by abdominal aorta. We can say that that the mid that the foregut, midgut, and the hindgut are supplied by three separate branches arising from abdominal aorta. So we are going to discuss all these. So let's discuss. First of all, we say that suppose here. We I write abdominal aorta. Suppose this to be an abdominal aorta, and the three separate branches arising from it, first, second, and the third. The first branch we call it the celiac trunk. So here we write it, and the second branch we call it superior mesenteric artery, and the third branch that is inferior mesenteric artery. So first of all, we will discuss about celiac trunk. We can say that celiac trunk is further divided into three branches. So let's see. The first branch arising from celiac trunk is left gastric artery. So I write here left gastric artery. The second branch arising from the celiac trunk is common hepatic artery. So I write here common hepatic artery. And the third branch arising from celiac trunk that is splenic artery. So we have here seen that the three branches arising from celiac trunk are the left gastric artery, common hepatic artery, and the splenic artery. Now further we see that. the common hepatic artery as we see that the common hepatic artery gives a further artery known as gastrointestinal artery and then the that continuation of common hepatic artery called proper hepatic artery so we can say that here that common hepatic artery it is going and it gives a branch known as gastrointestinal artery gastrointestinal artery now it is called what it is called proper hepatic artery so we can say they say that common hepatic artery after giving a branch called gastrointestinal artery it is called proper hepatic artery now we can say that the proper hepatic artery gives a branch called right gastric artery so now remember that the left gastric artery is a branch of direct celiac trunk whereas the right gastric artery is a branch of proper hepatic artery which itself is a continuation of common hepatic artery now one thing here to remember is that right gastric artery anastomose with the left gastric artery so now discuss so now come to the proper hepatic artery again now we can say proper hepatic artery further divided into right and left further divided into right and left hepatic branches right and left hepatic branches now we are saying here that proper hepatic artery divided into right and left hepatic branches now further we see there what happens to the hepatic branches now these right and left hepatic branches we seeing here the right hepatic branch gives further a branch called cystic artery okay now that cystic artery divides into two parts that is the superficial division and the deep okay and the cystic artery divide gives place to the gall bladder okay now come here to the gastrointestinal artery we can say gastrointestinal artery has further two branches you now see here the first branches of gastrointestinal artery it has two branches the first branch of gastrointestinal artery that is right gastro epiploic artery okay and the second branch that is superior pancreato duodenal artery pancreatico pancreatico duodenal artery okay 
these are the two branches of gastrodental artery now see here the third branch of celiac trunk that is the splenic artery splenic artery itself has three branches the first branch of splenic artery is short gastric artery now 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 seeing further the second branch of splenic artery that is left gastro epiploic artery and the third third are the numerous pancreatic branches that arise from the splenic artery numerous pancreatic branches now one thing here to remember is that that the right gastro epiploic artery anastomoses with the left gastro epiploic artery so this is anastomosis now come to the second branch of abdominal aorta that is 1 cm apart 1 cm apart so we we have as we further told to you the second branch of abdominal aorta called superior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric artery okay now seeing here the superior mesenteric artery now we can see the branches of superior mesenteric artery the branches of superior mesenteric artery are as middle colic artery second branch right colic artery third branch iliac colic artery and next branch inferior pancreatotubular artery okay the next branch next are some branches more branches that are uh, jejunal and ileal branches these are 12 to 15 in number okay the all these are the branches of superior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric artery branch from abdominal artery at l1 level this is one more more the point now we can see the branches of further these branches okay now come that middle colic artery divides into left and right ascend right colic artery divides into ascending and descending branch and and these ileo colic superior and inferior branches and they they have no further division okay okay now come to the third part that is inferior mesenteric artery then we will see the anastomosis of these arteries okay the third that is inferior inferior mesenteric artery now see the branches of this inferior mesenteric artery the first branch of this means inferior mesenteric artery is left colic artery and another branch sigmoid artery and the next branch that is superior artery. these are the three branches now we have seen that the three branches of inferior mesenteric artery that are the left colic artery sigmoid artery and the superior rectal artery now we can we see the further branching of these arteries that as the left colic artery divides into ascending and descending branch and the sigmoid artery that divides into highest sigmoid artery and the lowest sigmoid artery remember this highest sigmoid artery and the lower sigmoid so lowest sigmoid artery and then this is the superior rectal artery which is no further branching so now we have to see the anastomosis of these and these we can for start from these we can say that the ascending branch of left colic artery ascending branch of left colic artery anastomose with the left branch of middle colic artery that we have to show the anastomosis now second we see here the anastomosis of next artery now further we see that the descending branch of left colic artery anastomose with the higher sigmoid artery and this lower sigmoid artery anastomose with the superior rectal artery now see the anastomosis of this we can say that the right branch right mid branch of middle colic artery 
anastomose with the ascending branch of right colic artery and the descending branch of right colic artery anastomose with the superior branch of iliocolic artery now see here the inferior iliocolic artery this inferior iliocolic artery has many branches these branches are like the ascending colic branch anterior and posterior sickle branches and one that is a pendicular branch and uh, furthermore we can say iliac iliac branch these are the branches of iliocolic artery now at further we see there the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery and astomos with the superior pancreatoduodenal artery that is here we have discussed further that the superior pancreatoduodenal artery and astomos with the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery thank you friends this is all about the blood supply of abdominal part now pause the video to see the whole chart and revise this once again and surely you will be you will learn it very easily i have taught this uh, in a easy manner by making a chart okay thank you friends please comment your queries or your wishes i i it's my pleasure thank you